No. Uh, good evening and welcome to tonight's Zoning Board of Appeals hearing. Let me introduce some members of the town government to assist this board. To my left is Paul Hennings, attorney to the board. To his left is Blaise Donatio, a planner in the planning department. You are all here tonight seeking relief from the Smithtown Zoning Ordinances. And it's our job to try to help you achieve the relief you are requesting whenever possible. It's up to you to provide us with precise, accurate information so we as a board can make a decision based on the facts that you pr present here tonight. We as a board must consider the five conditions and they're listed here for you. One, whether the undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of the variance. Two, whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some other means. Three, whether the variance is substantial. Four, whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. And five, whether the alleged difficulty was self-created. Procedures for tonight's meeting. Cases will be called in the order they are advertised. When you are called, please present your certificates of postings and mailings to Mr. Donatio. Then you will be asked to go to the podium where you'll state your name and address for the record and then proceed, us to, tell, proceed to tell us why you need the variance. At the end of your presentation, if anyone in the audience would like to speak on your case, they will be given one opportunity to do so. Then the applicant can go back to the podium to answer their concerns. Once the public hearing is closed, no further information will be accepted concerning the case. There are three ways to find out about your case. You can stay after the hearing, but there's no guarantee that your case will be acted on tonight. You can call the planning office tomorrow morning, or you can wait and be notified by mail. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first case on the agenda, 17777, Deborah Curtin. 80 Sunrise Lane, Smithtown, the location of the property. The south side of Sunrise Lane, 1,184 feet west of Brookside Drive. The property is owned R21. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum front yard from 50 feet to 30 feet, uh, 36 feet, which is existing, to add to a non-conforming structure for a proposed 415 square foot first floor addition. Reduce the minimum side yard from 16 feet to one foot, which is existing for a 96 square foot shed. Reduce the minimum side yard from 16 feet to seven feet for an existing 150 square foot metal shed. Reduce the total side yards from 34 feet to eight feet. Reduce the minimum front yard setback from 50 feet to 28 feet for an existing six foot stockade fence. Good evening. Good evening, how are you? Are you the applicant? Uh, I work for the architect's office, yes. I'm representing Mr. Sedell. He's the You're homeowner. the applicant? He's the homeowner. I need, I need you first. Okay. Good evening. Could John. you state your name and address for the record, please? John Curtin, 80 Sunrise Lane, Smithtown, New York. Fine. Would you like to, this gentleman to speak on your behalf? Yes, I would. Fine, thank you. Now, can you state your name, spell your last name for the record, and give your address, please? Yes, it's James Glander, G-L-A-N-D-E-R. Do you want the address of the firm or my home address? Either one. 202-11 uh, East Shore Road, Huntington, New York, 11743. Thank you. Uh, the house is existing, non-conforming. We're proposing to do a uh, extension on the left side, keeping the non-conformity. Do you want me to read the answers to the questions or? I'm sorry? The uh, respond to your five questions? Uh, if you'd like. Um, whatever you would like. <laughs> it, 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 the house is existing non-conforming. Obviously, it was built sometime in the 50s or the 60s, probably prior to the existing zoning being in place. We're not looking to go past what's existing, and the uh, okay. amount we're going out on the side is within the setback. Okay, fine. Thank you. Does anyone on the board have any questions on this case? No question. Adrian? I do want to close. No. Blaze? 
Uh, my only question would be regarding the two sheds. Um, I noticed that they're very close to the side property lines. Is there any way that they can be relocated further away from the side yards? Mr. Gurton? It, we, it, they've been there for a number of years. They were even there the last time they went before the board to get the barn. So I think if we move them, they'd probably deteriorate. They're pre-manufactured and, you know, brought in on a dolly and dropped on a lot. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? No. Can I have a motion to close this case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next case on the agenda, 17780, John Mastronardo, 4 Overhill Drive, Smithtown. The location of the property, the east side of Overhill Drive, 102 feet east of Lower Road. The property is owned R21. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum front yard setback from 50 to 45 feet, reduce the side yard setback from 16 feet to 12 feet, Reduce the total side yards from 34 to 28 feet for proposed 578 square foot first floor addition. Good evening. Hi. Uh, your name and address, please? John Mastronato, 4 Overhill Drive, Smithtown, New York. And you would like this gentleman to speak on your behalf? Yes, I would. All right, thank you. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Um, for the record, my name is uh, Michael Morbillo, uh, architect, uh, Inspire Design Group. My office is located at 1650 Sycamore Avenue, Bohemia, New York. So uh, as the, the call of the meeting um, uh, addressed uh, three matters that were here before you tonight. One is for a, um, a reduction in the front yard. Um, my client is proposing a... Uh, uh, master bedroom addition onto the side of his home and um, he's uh, seeking to get a reduction in the uh, the front yard he's actually looking to line up with an existing front porch uh, that's on the home that had been approved on a, uh, a prior ZBA grant um, he's looking to also uh, come into go into the side yards uh, he's looking for a 25% uh, reduction from 16 feet down to 12 feet, and that's affecting his total side yards uh, with about uh, about an 18% reduction uh, from 34 uh, 34 feet to 28 feet. Um, the, he doesn't have another doesn't have another means of where to place the bedroom. It's the sort of the bedroom side of the house is where he's placing the addition, and um, he is uh, you know won't create an undesirable change in the uh, the character of the neighborhood or have an impact on the environment. And um, the, uh, the condition of the property is, he, he didn't create those conditions, They've, uh, they were already there. So if the board has any questions at this time, I'd be happy to answer them. All right, thank you. And will the board have any questions on this application? No planning? No, thank you. No? Is there anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? No. Can you have a motion to close this case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. The next case on the agenda, number 17781, Andrew Carbonara, 42 Baylor Drive, Smithtown, the location of the property, the east side of Baylor Drive, 445 feet south of Dartmouth Drive. The property is owned R10. The applicant is requesting a special exception for temporary living quarters for a family member. A variance to reduce the minimum front yard setback from 40 feet to 37 feet for an existing 55 square foot portico. Good evening. Good evening. I have handed in uh, power of attorney, limited power of attorney form for this hearing uh, to the, uh, to the uh, town attorney. And, uh, uh, for the record again, Michael Morbillo, architect representing the applicant, uh, Andrew uh, Carbonara. Uh, my office is 1650 Sycamore Avenue, Bohemia, New York. Um, 
just to start off very uh, very briefly, as uh, the call of the meeting stated, uh, the application is for a uh, 400 square foot uh, temporary living quarters for parents, uh, for a, a parent. And uh, also we are seeking to uh, legalize a small front porch uh, that's on the front of the house, which, uh, which is encroaching. Um, I have, I, I uh, am assuming I, that you have the planning advisory report of July 17th, and um, we are in full agreement with the report. There's, there's some recommendations in there. Uh, based on the requirements for a special exception, uh, we meet all those criteria, and um, the reduction in the front yard request uh, from 40 feet down to 37 is less than a 10% request. Mm -hmm. So if, um, if the board has any questions at this time, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Yeah. Anyone in the board have any questions on this application? No. no. Blaze? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the uh, planning department did prepare a planning advisory mm -hmm. report, and I'm sure the board has read it, and we do recommend approval of the application. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to be heard on this application? No. Do you have a motion to close this uh, case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, we'll go to the adjourned hearings. The next case, number 17761, James Fox, 82 Riviera Drive, Kings Park, the location of the property, <clears throat> excuse me, the southeast corner of Riviera Drive and Alder Drive. The property is owned R10. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum required lot area from 10,000 square feet to 9,628 square feet. Reduce the minimum required front yard from 25 feet to 20 feet on Riviera Drive for an existing patio and roof over patio. Reduce the minimum front yard from 25 feet to zero on Alder Drive for an existing dwelling and existing retaining wall. Reduce the minimum required east side yard from 12 feet to five feet for a roof over patio. Increase the maximum permitted paved surface in the west front yard on Alder Drive from 25% to 38%. Permit a two-story shed Variance to permit an accessory structure, roof over patio in the required front and east side yards. Variance to enlarge or expand a structure on a non-conforming lot for a non-conforming structure. Increase the maximum permitted gross floor area from 30% to 100%. Decrease the minimum required distance from any rear lot line from six feet to two feet. Permit environmentally sensitive lands to be altered. Good evening. Good evening. James Fox, 152 Highland Drive. I'm the owner of 82 Riviera. Uh, I submitted to the planning department a test bore showing the depth of groundwater was at 14 feet. And I believe that this um, uh, mitigates any environmental conditions on that particular property. And I have no intention of changing anything that's been existing there for quite some time. Thank you. Right, thank you. Any questions? Nope. No, thank you. <laughs> We're just waiting for the test hall results, right? We have them, <clears throat> and the, the test, uh, the, te the test, excuse me, the test boring results indicate that um, the boring hit groundwater at 14 feet below grade. So there is no environmentally sensitive land on the property with respect to high groundwater. Any variances that were called out regarding uh, ESL variances are not applicable in this case. Right. Thank you. Is there anyone like to be heard in this application? Oops. How are you? Uh, my name is Steve Finelli. I live at uh, 147 Alder Drive. I live uh, right next door to the property on Riviera that he's uh, that uh, Mr. Fox owns. Um, I'm sorry, sir. Sure. Last name is Finelli. F A N E L L I. No problem. Um, Basically, my concern, um, maybe it's just the way things are written in uh, the legalities for variances here. Uh, I do not have any issues with any of the structures that are already on the property. Uh, some of the things in the variance, the wording just uh, 
Concerns me um, in regard to increasing maximum permitted gross floor area from 30% to 100%, things of that nature that are going to expand on the property. If it pushes out to the set lines and all the other things, you're shaking your head at me. Am I reading this incorrectly? <laughs> No, no, we're not. Okay, my, my my concern is just that the house can't be expanded in great detail to what's everything that's on here. If right. it expands to everything that's on here, it's it doesn't fit the neighborhood. Makes more urban building out to the property lines. It destroys my property value. Destroys the. Um, it's on the corner on Riviera. If you push out to all the setbacks that they're requesting here, it's a traffic concern. If you're going to do building, we're right next to the river. It's an environmental concern. So these are my concerns about it. As far as the existing structures, the shed, the roof over the patio, the driveway, things like that, I have no, or the retaining walls, I have no objections to what's currently on the property that Mr. Fox owns. But I do object if there's going to be a massive uh, rebuilding. Right. So those are my concerns. Right. I think we went over last time also. Right? Uh, we did go over this last time. Uh, but but we'll, to be honest, I just saw a sign pop up the other day. I didn't get another letter. I don't know what's going on. This we, is. Uh, we, 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 this, is, this stuff is new to me, so I don't do this for a living. We were just waiting for the test hall results. Yes, but I understand. We'll, we'll bring the applicant back, and he'll answer your concerns. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Great. Mr. Chairman, do you want me to address some of Mr. Oh, Finelli's concerns? Only sure. because I want him to be aware of, yeah. of what's going on. I would appreciate that. There are a number of variances that are called out in the meeting that are related to what we call environmentally sensitive land. In this case, it was considered to be high groundwater. High groundwater is water that is less than 10 feet below the surface of grade okay. on anybody's property. Uh, Mr. Fox had a test boring done recently and he submitted the results of that test that show that the groundwater exceeds the 10 feet. They actually didn't encounter groundwater until 14 feet. Okay. Below grade. So a number of these variances will actually disappear. For example, I'm sure this is the one you're probably the most concerned about, is that increasing the permitted gross floor area from 30 percent to 100 percent. Yes, that is a major concern of mine. <laughs> the, reason, the reason why it goes from 30 percent to 100 percent is that if the property were deemed to be in high groundwater, that means that you have zero, technically, you have zero buildable lot area. Therefore, any structure that you build on the property is considered to take up all of the buildable lot area. In this case, that 100% goes away okay. because it's no longer environmentally sensitive land. And I might be speaking out of turn, but I would imagine that at the point that the board is ready to vote on this application, that that particular variance request would probably be denied. Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to be here? Would you like to come up or? Okay. I think I think Mr. Donatio explained it properly. Okay. All right. Great. Um, can I have a motion to close this uh, case, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. And that concludes the cases for tonight.